going on YouTube, I'm 10 Damage, and this is my personal top 10 soundtracks in video games. Now, I've put a lot of consideration into this list. I've gone through good games, I've gone through bad games, I've gone through other things. What is this? DK rap? Basically what I'm saying is I've been through quite a few different games. Okay. I hope this list can shed a little bit of light on games that you might not have tried before, or listened to. So with that being said, let's start it off with number 10, Streets of Rage 2. For the Sega Genesis. The music in this game is jammin'. This is the same composer that did Sonic 1, Yuzo Koshiro. It's sort of like a mix between electro-funk and trance music. This was one of those games that the Super Nintendo was jealous of. Sure, the Super Nintendo might have had a higher quality sound chip, but Yuzo Koshiro really made it work. Apparently he used his own original audio programming language for the Streets of Rage series, which he called Music Love. The first stage starts off in the street, much like the name implies, and the song that accompanies it is titled Go Straight. It's a perfect representation of what to expect when playing this game for the first time. You don't need any detailed instructions, you just go straight and kick some ass! A crowd favorite is a song called Dreamer. But personally, my favorite is Alien Power. It has a sweet buildup and good progression. Streets of Rage 2 is a great example of classic retro style video game music. It has such an energetic feel to it. I love putting this music on whenever I'm driving or studying. This game was all the rage in the 90s, and to me, it still is today. Number 9. Super Mario Galaxy for the Nintendo Wii. Oh yeah, Mojito Yokota and Koji Kondo really blew people away when this game came out. A 50-person symphony orchestra performed this, and it sounds damn good! They hesitated to have an orchestral soundtrack in this game. They were worried it wasn't a good enough fit, but really it makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, when you imagine a symphony orchestra, you can't help but think of something grand and epic. And shooting across the stars is exactly that. It's hard for me to not get a huge grin when I enter a stage and Mario is just flying like... Wahoo! Oh man, it's it's a great feeling. Oh, and when you get a star, it's like bum, bum, bam, 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 bam. Wahoo! Okay, I really gotta stop. On top of that, this game got incredible reviews all around. Maybe picking Mario Galaxy is a bit of a cop out, but I found it difficult not to. I especially enjoy the observatory theme. I always look forward to coming back to the hub world just to listen to it. It's very soothing and easy to listen to. And hey, who doesn't want to hang out with Rosalina? Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are excellent games. I recommend you play them if you haven't already. Mwah. Number 8. Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Now I know Gold and Silver got a remake for the Nintendo DS, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. But, you know what? I actually like the Game Boy versions a lot better. So that's why I'm going to stick with the originals. There's something absolutely timeless about how this music sounds. It plays on my nostalgia, and I find it extremely catchy. Sometimes I'll be moseying around my house, and I'll just get these tunes stuck in my head. Besides recently, I haven't even played these games in years, and I still remember most of the tunes. It's so gosh dang memorable. The work done on this title was composed by Junichi Masuda, who also composed the music for Pokemon Red and Blue, and continues to produce brilliant tracks for the series today. Maybe Pokemon Sun and Moon will be similar. I certainly hope so. As of this video though, those two games aren't out just yet. But sure enough, I'll be all over it when it does. Even though this game is almost 17 years old, it still holds up super well. Looking back at this game, it reminds me of when I was a lot younger. Everything I had was Pokemon. My bed sheets, my clothing, I collected the Pokemon cards, the movies. <gasps> Pokemon toothpaste? Holy crap! I was a huge fan of the TV show too. It probably drove my parents crazy. Pokemon was a behemoth. 
Screw Digimon. The music in this game in particular is the sole reason why the second generation of Pokemon will always be my favorite. From the soothing melody of New Bark Town to the epic rival battle tune, I will always remember this game and its soundtrack. Number 7 Diablo 2 Definitely one of the darkest games I've ever played. This game is crawling with demons and undead. Diablo 2 is a hack and slash dungeon crawling game for PC. I like to refer to it as the clicking game. And growing up, it was one of my favorites. Diablo 1, Diablo 2, and the expansion to Diablo 2 was composed by Matt Uhlman. Matt Uhlman also did work for the Torchlight series, which is sort of like a spiritual successor to Diablo 2. Matt Uhlman also did some of the music in World of Warcraft's second expansion, Burning Crusade. And it is very similar to Diablo 2. In the dark setting of this game, classical guitar was a perfect match. A lot of different stages had their own tracks as well. All of it really fit the atmosphere of the game. It'll give you the feeling that all is lost. If I were to generalize this music into one word, it would be hopeless. How could one person defeat all of these enemies? One click at a time. At one point, Diablo 2 was a huge part of my life. All of those Countess runs, killing everything in the Chaos Sanctuary, doing Bale runs. <laughs> Remember Trist runs? There's a lot of runs in this game. That's what we used to call it. Runs. Deckard Kane. I must have started at least like 500 characters in my lifetime on this game. I'll never forget the moments I've spent playing this game with close friends. Diablo 2 is still a really great game, and I highly recommend it. Help me. Help. Help me. Help. Help me. Number 6. Sonic CD for the Sega CD. This game actually has two soundtracks. One version is for the US release, and one is for the Japanese slash European release. Is it considered cheating if I count both as one? I hope not because it's really hard to choose between the two. They both deliver good music in their own way. One thing in particular that's awesome about the Sonic CD soundtrack is the transition between past, present, and future. Each time zone's music is a variation of the same theme. I find that to be a nice touch. Not very many games do that. The attention to detail is outstanding. My favorite tracks are the title Tempest present theme on the Japanese side and Palm Tree Panic Past. I also think that the opening theme song for the US version was far superior. The only thing I could say about the US version is that it has this. This is a weird little easter egg in the game. Supposedly it reads, Fun is infinite with Sega Enterprises. Signed, Majin. The theme playing in the background is the same as the boss theme. It's probably one of the creepiest songs in any game I've ever heard. But you know what? I guess it serves its purpose. This song is supposed to make the battle really tense, and you know what? I'm tense as balls whenever I hear this. Much like Streets of Rage 2, it was way ahead of its time. Sonic CD's dynamic soundtrack is what makes it so great. This is a really cool Sonic game, and I definitely suggest you try it out. Number 5 Zelda is quite possibly one of the most beloved game franchises ever. Any Zelda game could be considered for a list like this. With its brilliant soundtrack, Skyward Sword stands out much like Super Mario Galaxy did. But it isn't exactly the title I have in mind. A Link to the Past? Ooh, Ocarina of Time. No, but close. I'm thinking... The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask for the Nintendo 64 and 3DS. The darkest of the Zelda franchise. Possibly one of the darkest Nintendo games to date. Besides maybe the Mother series. The music in this game truly fits the theme of ripping all but the faintest glimmer of hope from your heart. Yet again, Koji Kondo takes the spotlight. To me, this game is like a fever dream. It's chilling even outright insane at times. 
But to be honest, sometimes you need to embrace a bit of insanity now and then. My favorite thing about Majora's soundtrack is how progressive it is. Day 1, 2, and 3 of Clock Town are all different. It has this relaxing tone to it on day 1, and it only intensifies as the days pass. By day 3, you will hear this undertone that will really creep you out. And it isn't only Clock Town. Sometimes the dungeons will have multiple tracks too. Music plays a huge role in this game. If you don't want the moon to crash into Clock Town and pretty much destroy everything, then you have to play the Song of Time and go back to day one, where everything seems okay again. In this game, you're constantly racing the clock, so you better think fast. Number four. Golden Sun for the Game Boy Advance. Motoi Sakuraba is another veteran when it comes to video game music. His work on Golden Sun really shows off the Game Boy Advance's capabilities. It's no secret that I absolutely adore these games. As far as the traditional turn-based RPG genre, I think these two games are my favorite. Golden Sun has a good mix of battles and unique puzzles. A lot of the best themes are in the lighthouses and the battle themes, but my favorite is a tune called Elemental Stars. It plays close to the beginning of the first game in the Soul Sanctum where the protagonists and antagonists begin their long journey. I found this song to be awe-inspiring and magical. It's perfect for what it is, a song to prelude the long adventure ahead. And through Golden Sun 1 and The Lost Age, boy is it a long journey. This game was so big and had such a long development cycle that they put it into two separate games. Both games essentially have the same music too. So I'm gonna say that it's safe to assume that they both count as one. If you're looking for a long game to play, then you're in luck. Between these two games are a crap load of content, including interesting level designs, characters, battle options, story, artistic backgrounds, and of course, great music. These games were such an easy pick for this list. Golden Sun is truly a gem of its time. Number three. Final Fantasy X for the PlayStation 2. This music was composed by Nobuo Umatsu, Masashi Hamazu, and Junya Nakano. This music is so unmistakable. I can hear almost any of these songs and know exactly where each of them play in the game. When this game came out, I was enthralled by the graphics and the story. If they had only included a few of the original tracks from this game into its sequel, Final Fantasy X2, I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more. How could I possibly go to Kilika and not enjoy the acoustic guitars of Spira Unplugged? I mean, Final Fantasy X 2 has some great music, but I can't pry myself away from the original. Well, anywho, Final Fantasy X has a plethora of kick-ass tunes. Wandering Flame comes to mind as one of the best tracks. The ambience of this track, meshed with the story and the setting of this game, blows my mind. Final Fantasy games are highly regarded for their music, but 10 really struck a chord with me. Final Fantasy 10. That's my number! No wonder why I love this game. Apparently, there are concerts of this music still going on today, along with other Final Fantasy music. I definitely have to go to one of those. That must be a blast. Final Fantasy 10 is always a trip, whether I'm playing it over again or just listening to its memorable soundtrack by itself. It's absolutely one of my favorite Final Fantasy games. You know what? I don't know about you, but I'm about ready for some Blitzball. Yeah! Number two. Stardew Valley, an indie game created by Eric Barone. In case you haven't played Stardew Valley yet, it's somewhat of a farming sim with combat, fishing, things to collect, exploration, dating, mining, and crafting. There's even a little bit of mystery involved too. I always feel so captivated when I play this game. Eh, don't feel like doing much today? Go take a load off at the bar. Hey, there's even mini games to play here, cool. The music does a great job conveying the seasons. The melancholy of fall, the isolation of winter, the reinvigoration of spring, and the lightheartedness of summer. Even the stillness of rain is present in this game. And that's not even everything. Progression into the unknown depths of the mines will bring forth varying tracks as well. The further you go, the more intense it gets. 
I love every one of these characters, and it's hard to want to leave. If I could choose a world and a video game to live in, I might choose this one. Hold on, just give me a moment to brag real quick. My farm is super badass. I fixed up my greenhouse and grow ancient fruit. I've got animal. I've got plant. I've got tree. I've got horse. Everyone loves me. Everyone. And I'm super awesomely not sad on the inside. <laughs> Not only is the music great, but the pixel graphics are incredible too, and they'll always hold up. It all coincides so well, and makes a brilliant package together. If you enjoy games like Harvest Moon or Animal Crossing, then you're in for a real treat. From fixing up your inherited farm, to meeting and befriending all of the townsfolk, there's seemingly always something new to experience in this game. I find Stardew Valley to be incredibly relaxing, and it's such a great change of pace compared to most modern games. Number one. So this is it. My pick for the number one soundtrack in all of video games. Undertale. No worries, I tried my best to make sure there were no spoilers ahead. Undertale is a work of art. If you haven't played it yet, don't spoil it for yourself. This game is best enjoyed blind. Undertale is an indie game created by Toby Fox. If you enjoy games like Earthbound or the Mother series, then you're in for a real treat. Hey, I've mentioned the Mother series twice now. Besides maybe the Mother series. This is the kind of game that will have you questioning the purpose behind your decisions. Perhaps it's a good thing that it shines a light on things that could desensitize ourselves. Even now, it's kind of rare to see that in a video game. Undertale truly does a great job of flipping common tropes on its head. The battle system in particular has a very distinctive design. It's like a traditional JRPG in the sense that random battle scenes will occur. Except it's done in a sort of bullet hell jam. You control this heart and you have to learn the patterns to not get hit. It's simple, and yet very complex at the same time. And this battle system never gets stale because it's always changing and doing new things. My favorite is when Undertale changes the mechanics of the heart a little bit. Usually that happens during a boss fight. And as soon as that happens, the soundtrack changes as well. And it's awesome! You'll be thinking, ha, I can handle this boss. And then wham! It switches it up and you have to think on your toes. You have to control the heart differently. It's freaking awesome! Even if Undertale isn't your thing, the music out of context is still great. It's the epitome of video game music. Toby Fox makes good use of piano melodies in this game. It helps the game feel fresh on your first playthrough and reminiscent in future playthroughs. I'm sure if you're on YouTube enough, you've probably heard it before. Or maybe if you've been to a convention recently. The music is everywhere, and that's for a good reason. It strikes a chord with every emotion. Parts of the game will be sad, parts of the game will be happy, terrifying, weird, funny, badass and the music reflects these emotions perfectly. I really can't praise this game enough. I love this game. It's one of the best games I've played in a long time. Who knows, in five years, this list might not even look the same. But one thing's for certain, I know I won't regret putting Undertale as number one. Real quick, I'd like to personally thank a few music-related YouTube channels out there who let me use a few of their tracks. Let's start with The Ophidians slash Retrospector. Smx. Uh, or just SYGMX. Orangustang. This channel name starts with a zero instead of an O. So like, z zero Orangustang. My new soundtrack, and Super Guitar Brothers. These channels do fantastic work. Links are in the description for each of these channels. You won't be disappointed, so check them out. Hold on, it's other stuff time. So hey, if you enjoyed watching my video, why not show some support and like the video? Waha! See what I did there? Nope. Haha! <laughs> Subscribe to my YouTube channel! And if you really enjoyed watching, then you could check out some of my other videos. You can click here and check out a different top 10 video I did. A top 10 Game Boy Advance games. Or, if you're interested in something a little different, I did a review of a Sega Genesis game called Dynamite Heady. You can access that by clicking over here, respectively. 
So yeah, down in the comments section I have a quick little question for you. This video's question is pretty simple. What's your favorite soundtrack? It can be from a video game, it can be from a movie or a TV show, or, or, or a book, whatever you could think of that is a soundtrack. But it has to be your favorite, or one of your favorites. It was a pleasure as always, and thank you so much for watching my video. See you soon!